Hi, this is Jerry Mikulski here to explain uh, the learning scenarios that are up top in the EXO narratives on how to leapfrog Latin America through the lens of education document. The scenarios are really meant to be um, different settings under which the kinds of project proposals that we're going to suggest uh, might live. And uh, we have liberal democracy under pressure. Uh, which means countries like the United States where we're not entirely sure it's going to be a normal democracy in another four or five years. Uh, now, if you look down this list, you'll see that there's no normal democracy setting. And that's because this may be a little cynical of us, but we don't think there are many democracies in the world that aren't under some substantial pressure right now. Now, in parentheses here, we say might result in UBI. UBI is universal basic income. What we mean is that the kinds of pressure that these countries are under might cause some of them to turn to policies that include a universal basic income. Uh, there might be mass unemployment, there might be other, other sorts of pressures that, that lead in that direction. We don't know, this kind of a wild card. But uh, liberal democracy under pressure is a major, major category here. The, another category is those who are involuntarily displaced. So there's many different kinds of refugees. There's refugees from climate change, and as uh, sea levels rise, there are going to be more of those. Right now, it's probably from disastrous climate events, uh, monsoons, thunderstorms. In the U.S., we just had some terrible tornadoes that were much more deadly than, than usual. Um, there are also many economic refugees, and there are many refugees escaping violence in their home countries, whether it's Syria falling apart or Central America and uh, you know mortal danger and so forth. But there are a lot of people who are displaced and because they're displaced, they don't have infrastructure, they don't have a home address, they don't have a lot of things that normally uh, one would have, even if one were very poor. Uh, and also, in some cases, they may be in camps or other sorts of temporary housing where they're not permitted to get employment or do other kinds of things. So there's a bunch of issues around those who are involuntarily displaced. And we'd like to pay attention to them uh, because there's a huge opportunity to do something really good for them. That is a different category from those dis disenfranchised by being, you know, uh, way out in the boonies or being extremely poor, whether in, in uh, out in the rural areas or in cities. And so disenfranchised people may still have an address. They may have reasonable internet coverage. They may have a, a cell phone handy or something like that. But still, uh, they are disenfranchised. They don't have much of a say in what gets done around them. And it's really important for us in these quests that we pay attention to those people and make sure they have a voice at the table somehow. Um, there are a few places where the state is in pretty complete control. And I think external ideas that the, the Chinese Communist Party is in full control of China are probably uh, a stretch. But certainly China has far more control over what happens inside of its walls than do most other countries on Earth. And there are a few other countries around where the state is really wildly in control. And for those kinds of places, there may still be initiatives that we can propose, uh, but there would have to be framed and probably be pretty different to work in a, in a country where the state is in control. Then finally, we have a, a pretty different um, scenario which we call Ready Player One. And this is the name of a, of a science fiction book that was made into a movie, which we recommend you watch. It's uh, basically what happens when all of life sort of falls into uh, a video game that you have to wear uh, uh, augmented reality headsets to, to play in, or virtual reality headsets, and where suddenly we are citizens of the metaverse. And here uh, the question is, uh, this scenario could cut across all countries, all policies, all polities, all different sorts of uh, things that we've been talking about here. So, um, so this metaverse kind of applies broadly. Uh, and some of us are more and less skeptical about the fact that a lot of human activity is going to move into a place where we have to wear some kind of, of uh, facial cover that gives us immer immersion in this world, uh, etc. Uh, for uh, an attempt to try to explain kind of uh, a better way of looking at that. And this is nascent, there isn't much there yet, but um, uh, I bought the domain thebetterverse.org and uh, we'll be putting up there some ideas of what would be maybe a better metaverse than what Zuckerberg is proposing Facebook do for us all. So these are the learning scenarios. We're not intending these to be cubby holes to separate out 
different initiatives that we come up with. It's entirely likely, for example, that an initiative might work really well for people who are involuntarily displaced and also those who are disenfranchised. Uh, it's, it's easy to imagine uh, things that would work there. Uh, it may be that those involuntarily displaced need a basic infrastructure like, like some kind of Wi-Fi coverage and devices even. Uh, and so initiatives that go there might only apply there. Uh, and then it's easy to envision that a Ready Player One metaverse scenarios might cut across several different kinds of scenarios uh, of the other scenarios as we go. So we don't intend these to be uh, buckets to separate, but rather um, categories of scenarios that we see covering huge uh, populations in the world, some of them very, very distributed and broken up in different places like those who are displaced, um, but places where we can actually go in and work on initiatives and define them better. Uh, we then have use cases, which we'll explain separately, but for right now, that's it for, um, for the learning scenarios.